So I think this community is, is a sad place tonight. It certainly is. What are you hearing from uh, people in, in L.A. tonight, Larry? I'm hearing sadness. And look at all those crowds gathered at, at UCLA Hospital and people, exp people crying in the street. And here in Hollywood, where our studios are located, you know, there's, uh, there's no way to describe it. This is a shock that bears with the great shocks we've suffered through over the past few years and into the 60s, 70s and 80s. Here comes, here comes another one. And it's almost like when you wake up in the morning, Kitty, as you well know, in this business, what's next? What, what, what's next? Yeah. This is this is very sad. Um, you know, from all accounts, um, where you live, uh, Hollywood is a very fickle town. Yeah, as Mr. Jackson was um, going through his legal troubles, did you get the impression that his fan base was still solid, or is there is a sort of vacillation going with the fortunes of Michael uh, Jackson? Vacillation is a good word. Uh, certainly, with the based on the accusations, you couldn't say, "Boy, I, wow." I think a lot of people who cared for him hoped that they were untrue, hoped that he was a guy who just loved kids a lot. He loved little boys, liked to play with them. He had toy land, and that there was nothing sexual about it. I think that's what they hoped. I think most of the big, large middle looked at it with disdain, wondering, could he have done this? What do you do? Why? How did this happen to someone like that? And then, of course, the other side, the, the last third, which was totally against him, didn't like him, wanted the stories, I think, to be true, wanted him to fail, and you'll always have that in this business. Again, when you're up, you're easy pickings. And of course now, I don't think we will ever know. There'll be lots, I fear what's coming now, stories about what Michael Jackson did to me and my arrangement with Michael Jackson. The tabloids next week are gonna be horror stories. And I think in this realm of a little calmness, let us miss what was his talent. What he gave us was his talent. And since that's all we know to be proof, let's just look at that. He gave us his talent, and we sure like that. May he rest in peace. Thank you very much, Larry. Um, we will join you Thank at you, 9 o'clock. We look forward to your broadcast. Let's listen Thanks. to a little of We Are the World. It was written in 1985 by Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie. back um, with Alan Light and Anthony DeCurtis. Alan, we just heard a, an excerpt from We Are the World. Um, it was a, a, an absolute movement at the time, a social movement, in fact. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I think, um, you know, Michael Jackson in, in so many ways redefined what a superstar was, what that meant in terms of conquering all media at, at all times. And this was after Thriller. This was sort of in the immediate still the glow of Thriller when uh, Michael Jackson was far and away the biggest star in the world um, and still had a very close relationship with Quincy Jones and the, the combined power of those two that were able to bring everybody together, um, you know, were able to initiate this, this movement to raise money, as somebody pointed out before, that led to Live Aid, that really led to this notion of big superstar activity to, to draw attention to a cause like like famine in Africa, um, he was in a position to do that. I mean, there are so few people who could be as magnetic as that, who could have that moment, and then utilize it to, to execute something of that scale. Let me bring in our correspondent, Jessica Yellen, right now. Uh, Jessica covered the uh, trial extensively and has done quite a bit of reporting about Michael Jackson. Jessica, what are your thoughts this evening? Well, first of all, it's enormously sad. Uh, you think about, I remember when I met Michael Jackson and how uh, unbelievably fragile he was and the sense of pathos there was around him. Just an aura of uh, sadness that you got that was so strikingly different from what you saw on stage. He was unbelievably thin, thin-boned. His skin was almost papery. Uh, he was wearing thick, thick makeup that's the kind of makeup I'm told burn victims wear. Uh, and he had these soft eyes that made you, and this whispery voice that made you just feel a sense of protectiveness